Biography, Childhood and Youth There were five children in the family, of which James was the eldest, but four survived to adulthood. James's ancestors on his father's side were immigrants from Scotland and moved to America in the mid-17th century. James's childhood was spent on a small plantation of 500 acres. He attended Pastor Archibald Campbell's private school, then went to William and Mary University in Williamsburg, then the Virginian capital. It must be said that as a student, James showed an excellent academic record. Since the young man was the eldest in the family, in the future he was to become the heir to his father's estate, however, life ordered otherwise. When the revolution broke out, James had to interrupt his studies and join the Continental Army, as many of his classmates and teachers did. The future president took part in the Battle of Trenton, in which he was wounded, as well as in the Battle of Monmouth. James Monroe ended the war with the officer rank of lieutenant colonel. Career as a Politician From 1780 to 1783, James Monroe studied law. His supervisor was Thomas Jefferson, with whom James developed a warm friendship that lasted until the end of his life. The beginning of the career of a politician was the election of Monroe to the Chamber of Deputies of Virginia in 1782. Then he was sent to the Congress of Confederations, whose sessions were held in New York. Monroe was a member of the Congress until 1786, traveling to the Kentucky region and future regions of the Northwest. During the period 1784-85, he became famous, gaining influence in shaping the ordinances of the municipality of the Northwestern regions, implementing Jefferson's policies. He also had his own estate in the territory, which he acquired as payment for his military service. Monroe was one of the energetic and active politicians who favored the development of the American West, which, moreover, had a beneficial economic impact on the lands he owned. Later, he did not attend the Philadelphia Convention, held between May 25 and September 7, 1787, where the Articles of Confederation were discussed. In the opinion of many, including Monroe, they were weak and not suitable for inclusion in the U.S. Constitution. Monroe saw the text of the new Constitution as too generalized and inapplicable to individual states, but after its ratification by Virginia in 1788, Monroe, despite voting against it, was elected to the new Federal Senate in December 1790. He was in the Senate until May 1794, while actively opposing the ideas of federalism that came from Alexander Hamilton, then Secretary of the Treasury. In 1794, James Monroe received an appointment and went to France as an American ambassador. While in this position, he did much for the Americans imprisoned in France to free them. This included the release of the Marquise of Lafayette. An ally of the French Revolution, Monroe expressed his views to the French regarding the policies of President George Washington, which were against British interests. After the Jay Treaty was signed by American politicians in the British capital, Monroe was extremely outraged, especially since at the time France was at war with England and the U.S. Act was for her simply outrageous. The incumbent American president, finding the work of the ambassador to France ineffective, dismissed him from his post. In 1799, Monroe was elected governor of Virginia, and in 1803, the American president sent him to the capital of France to negotiate the purchase of New Orleans, which was under the jurisdiction of France and West Florida, which was owned by Spain. In the spring of 1803, a treaty was formalized for the purchase of Louisiana, nearly doubling the territory of the United States. From 1803 to 1807, James Monroe fulfills a diplomatic mission already in England. In 1811, the current U.S. President Jay Madison appointed him to the post of Secretary of State. Monroe did not take part in military actions with Great Britain, which was negatively shaped for America. And since September 1814, at the request of President Madison, Monroe's duties began to include the functions, except for the Secretary of State, of the Minister of War. He is the only politician in American history to combine two offices simultaneously between October 1814 and the end of February 1815. President of the United States Based on President Washington's rule of only two terms as president, Madison did not run for a third term in 1816, making way for James Monroe, the Democratic and Republican nominee. Despite protests from the Federalist Party, Monroe won the election and assumed the office of President of the United States. The fifth American president began his presidency by traveling through the northern states, which according to a Boston newspaper was praised as an era of good feelings. The economic situation in the country at that time was favorable. 
the president traveled to different regions of the United States in 1818 and 1819. He made adequate decisions regarding appointments. As Secretary of War, the representative of the South, John Calhoun, and as Secretary of State, the representative of the North, John Quincy Adams. With the onset of depression in 1899, in the economy, the good intentions began to fade. Monroe had to deal with the conflict over the inclusion of Missouri in the Union, with its status as a slave state, although there was a solution regarding the addition of the free state of Maine, the 1820 compromise with Missouri. At the same time, the Federalists failed to field a presidential candidate, and Monroe was re-elected to the presidency. During his reign, the economy did not experience much turmoil. Besides, there was no inter-party strife. In 1820, the U.S. favorably resolved the problem with the Spanish borderlands. On December 2, 1823, the Monroe Doctrine was adopted and proclaimed to Congress. What is its essence? According to the text of the Doctrine, the United States will not participate in future European colonization and that outside interference in the affairs of American independent countries will be perceived as hostility to the United States. So, the foreign policy pursued by Monroe was based on non-interference in the affairs of European countries, however, and the countries of Europe should not allow any wrongful acts against the United States. After serving as president toward the end of his second term as president, in the spring of 1825, Monroe returned to his own estate in the Old Dominion. He was active in the Board of Visitors of the University of Virginia and served as president of the Virginia Constitutional Convention from 1829 to 1830 before resigning due to ill health. Death in 1830, after burying his wife, Monroe changed his residence to New York City to be closer to his daughter Mary. James Monroe died on July 4, 1831, having outlived Jefferson and Adams by exactly five years. He was originally buried in his son-in-law's family vault in New York City, and in 1858 a reburial took place in Virginia's Hollywood Cemetery. In 1928, the James Monroe Museum was opened to house Monroe memorabilia, a library, and a large number of documents showing the history of the reign of the fifth President of the United States. These days, this National Historic Monument is managed by a board formed by members of the Monroe Foundation and representatives of the University of Mary Washington.